Let's go to God's word today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 11. Let's read tongues and the realm of the spirits. Hebrews 11. So this is just part two. What we started last week. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I'm actually going to verse 3, but it's good we read. Verse 2. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Next verse. Through faith, we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. That word framed there, another word for it is chiseled by the word of God. The word that we see now, somebody framed it. It did not use a physical chisel. It chiseled it out by its words. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Everything you see don't come from what you see. There is a boss that is troubling you. There is an account that you see that is empty. There is a body that you see that is sick. The Bible said that the things that are seen did not come. That's why the Bible said that though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. For the weapons of our warfare, the moment you begin to walk after the flesh, you'll miss the point. Because the things that are seen are not being sponsored by what is seen. In other words, visible things have invisible backing. Hallelujah. God bless you. Can I have your seat? Did somebody get what I've just said now? So the Bible says, God created visible things from an invisible storm, which is the word of God. It chiseled out the word. Then we stopped last week reading James chapter 2, and that's where we are starting from today. Sorry, James chapter 3. Let's start from around verse 6. James 3, 6. So these are facts. Yeah. Let's start from verse 4. <laughs> I want exactly where we start. Behold, remember we said this last week. Behold also the ships, which they be so great, and are driven by fierce winds. Yet, everybody say yet. Yes. The Bible is acknowledging two things here. The ship is very good, or very big, very great. The winds are real. The Bible is not denying the winds. Ancestral spirit, family pattern. The Bible is saying that the wind, the wind blowing is real. But the wind does not determine the destination of the ship. To the uninitiated, looking from outside, it will think that the wind blowing is the one directing the ship. But the Bible is saying that there is something called ruder or steering that direct direction of the ship. The effects of your life, the background, whatever ground, foreground, background, neutral ground, the Bible is saying that that is not the factor. Those factors are there, but what is playing the role is the tongue. God has given every man and every woman a paint and a brush to paint your future. And we read last Sunday, Jesus began to warn that you give an account of every idle word. For the Bible says, for by your words you are justified and by your word you shall be condemned. Before we take it a step further, Revelation chapter 12, a scripture that you know very well, verse 10, and then we go to 11, Revelation 12, 10. Now the Bible says, I heard a loud voice in heaven, the accuser of our brethren, the salvation strength, the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ, for the accuser of the brethren is cast down. How is Satan cast down? We started by saying that every tongue that rises against him in judgment, Isaiah 54, the last verse, thou shalt condemn. I want to show you how heavenly battles, how they are shaped and the role of your tongue in what is going on in the invisible realm. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Every tongue, there is a reason why they will not prosper. They will not prosper because you have been given authority 
to set a law in motion that will make sure that they don't prosper. There are nations that if you fire Misa into them, except the type that Putin is just putting up now, that cannot be dictated in the air because it's done in such a way that it will land where Putin wants it to land. All other missiles known to men, first uh, class nations like America, maybe like Germany, like Russia, they already have something around them that sensors a missile coming will be neutralized in the air before it gets to their land. In Nigeria, we have God. There is an angel that will catch the missile because we have no technology. <laughs> And the cow will not get tail. So that is why when nations are attacking Putin, blaming him for attacking Ukraine, let our nation shut up. Say, cow will not get mother. You don't have wound at your back. Anyway, let's just leave that. <laughs> are you following me? <laughs> so now, the thing in the ear that is always neutralizing those things, a Christian. Number one, that's why the word of God is described as two edges sword. Ephesians chapter 6, let's start from verse 12. This is one of the weapons listed in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. The word of God is a double edged sword. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Go to 13, 14. Then the Bible says we take on the whole armor of God. And then the Bible began to list the armor. Then the last one mentioned there is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. But then it's a two-edged sword. Why? One part of the sword, one job that your tongue does is to create. The other job is to cancel. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Did somebody hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When the Bible says no weapon formed against you shall prosper, there will be weapons formed against you. They will not prosper because you are using your mouth to cancel something. Any means are coming. And missiles are all over. From the one that are daily, directly from uh, for, for so darkness, occultic attack, demonic attack. All sicknesses are not spiritual. Some are just who can stress your body, eat the wrong thing or whatever. But there are also sicknesses that can be spiritual. Now, from things that are directly spiritual... So the laws of nature, things that are not exactly spiritual. So when we talk about attack, they are of different types. We'll look at them another day, but make no mistake about this. Negative energy is a spiritual force that people often neglect. I tell you something today. When I gave you an example last week of a lady that I was praying with, and the Lord said, tell her that when next she's pregnant, she lost about four pregnancies or so. Tell her that she should never tell her mom. I told you last week, I know the mom. She's a Christian. In this show, we don't suspect people and call people names. The mom is a Christian belonging to a prayer band. Even the instruction confused me. She told me when I said, because I, at times God will tell you, I suppose, Lord, Lord, how do I say this? When I told her, she said that her elder sister too went through the same process until she stopped telling their mom. And their mom is not, she's not a, she's a bona fide child of God. You see, when I described, probably she belonged to a prayer so called group that she tells them, my daughter said, let us pray. Listen to me. Anytime you announce a good news to somebody and their heart sabotages what you are saying, there is a negative energy release. If there is no sufficient force backing what you are about to do, it will be aborted. This is how good... I, see, Bible takes witchcraft beyond somebody flying in the night. Yes. That's an aspect of it. That's why the Bible said that Paul, uh, uh, Samuel called Saul. He said, for your stubbornness, you are a witch. He said for stubbornness, like a witch, sin of witchcraft. Yeah. See, there are people. It, hap it happens with friends. Even among, I have seen sisters exemplifying this. Younger one meeting a fine guy first and announcing at home that I met someone I'm about to get married. The sister resented the idea. When people brood over that thing, in Isaiah 14, Lucifer did not speak with his mouth. Give me Isaiah 14, 13. He did not speak with his mouth. He only said in his heart, I will place my throne above the throne of God. But God answered him with a mouth. Ah, yeah. That means in the realm of the spirit, thoughts are not immaterial. They are tangible. More tangible than you can imagine. 
Everybody read this together. What does it say? Where? When Nebuchadnezzar spoke in his heart also and he became an animal, he stood alone and he said, that means in the spirit and they don't joke with what is being said. So when you tell a person that I just got, I remember a person I mentioned, uh, I've heard stories upon stories. You know, <laughs> you know, the pastor said, I will just quote it this way. It was starting, when they were starting, with his friend. I was like, you've heard him say this online. They, they were, it was, it was, when it, they were just young people, they were in school together. And God has called him to ministry and was about to start. And he mentioned to this friend, who was always maybe kind of competing with, he just told him that, we just found the venue. The guy was driving. He announced the good news and the guy slammed the brake. You see, this is what happens. When you give people opportunity, they will pretend. If you are 12 in the office and you want to know those who are beefing you, if you are now suddenly that your boss just called down, all of you are contemporaries, that a guy just called me and he told me that I've been promoted. If you are fast enough to scan offices, you will know somebody. That's why Satan can fake anything but if you want to identify, look into his eyes. Eyes don't lie. And in forensics and in America, that's how they, they same face. So, when you look around, but see, if you wait for like 10 seconds, everybody will pretend and give a smile as if they're happy with. So, if, in, in other words, if you hit people suddenly with a good news, the one who genuinely loves you will rejoice spontaneously. The ones who don't, we have a problem, but after three seconds, we are just, ah, praise God. If you are fast enough, yes, then he said, he knew, he knew that there was something wrong with this friend. Without telling anybody, a pastor came to preach, the day they were inaugurating, one of the leading men of God in Nigeria, known to be a coded prophet, I don't want to talk about it, he just told him after the service, see me after the service, and he said, that friend that sat beside you, let him leave your ministry because it's a danger going to without a word. That's what the Bible said, that one of the things that the sword of the spirit does, ah, yeah, is a discerner of thoughts and intent of heart. Hebrews 4.13, he said, discerner of thoughts and intent of heart. There are thoughts in people, see, many of us, hey, when you now want to make a mistake, Make one somebody that produces that kind of negative energy make it your prayer partner because many people don't know secretly human beings compete a lot, human beings compete a lot, a lot. People compete, you know. When you say to somebody that Bill Gates' daughter, or you mention somebody. It's the richest singles or not. It doesn't mean anything. Well, biggest in America. I don't send you, don't send. But you see, when they say two of them, they want the same primary school, secondary school, you know each other. And now she just a billionaire. You are likely. When you hear, let me use a, an example that is more. When you are like six ladies, all of you are friends, you left school together, you belong to the same alumni group and everything. So when they say this one right now, it doesn't mean a lot to you. But you see, if one by one they are getting married and they are not the next person about it and it's not you, except you have the spirit of God, as soon as the person announces to you, you can rejoice with the person, but you are likely to go home and start asking questions, Lord, when is my turn? But when it is somebody I'm far off, it doesn't mean anything. In other words, that's why you would expect that younger brothers or people that are very popular should just enjoy the world with them. But you know, in many cases, it's not like that. Because the Bible says the brother is born for adversity. As long as the person feels like you are contemporary from the same area. This is why I have seen this even in ministry. In every generation, pastors that are celebrated, that people talk about, they always have somebody who is who does about the same thing they do and he doesn't like them it's in every field your greatest rival will be those who do what to do and about your age you understand that's the way it is and this is where negative energies are coming from how come it's the only one that was why joseph was not so by enemies his brothers if somebody came to their house who was not one of them and he told them a dream, they would celebrate him as a prophet. So when Jesus got hold of this fact, he said, a prophet is not without honor. Except, because the people will say that, how come you are? 
Yes. You might not feel that you don't have a car until you are seven in a group and the sixth person just bought it, so you are the only one left. As you are praying over the car, you start praying, like, Lord, we thank you for this car, but remember what time you know. You understand what I'm saying? I'm saying that in the world of men, these things, they happen. They happen. <laughs> I don't want to go into so, so yes, uh, this. I mean, the, the other sister came to me and she was trying to talk down, give me reasons why her sister should not marry the guy. I want to say, yes, they are there. I've spoken with this guy. There's nothing wrong with this guy. The problem is that your mind can't take the fact that your younger sister is getting married before you. I said, ah, life is not like that. That, she, that doesn't mean she's ahead of you in life. It's the same thing you see on the road. Ordinary driving. Somebody's driving, maybe on speed 60. Maybe you are rushing somewhere and you try to overtake them. Have you seen that? Then they now sit tight. <laughs> I, I, I believe they should put a caption on all cars in Nigeria. Overtaking you on the road does not mean overtaking you in life. You don't know why the person is running. But then you, you get so serious. That's why I've learned something in Nigeria. I'm not saying she's bad, but I do it and well, I've been driving for about 20 It has never affected me before. See, if you want to enter space, don't traffic it. Once you traffic it, they block it. They will just get this thing. One day it was a woman. I wonder, I said, Madam Akilo Day. Then she began to laugh. Because I was laughing. She, she too saw what she was doing. She was trying to say, my... So I stopped. I said, okay, enter. I said, Madam, what is it? Then she looked at me. Then she smiled. Then I said, please enter. Then she entered. Then when she was in, just, she just waved. I'm, I'm, I don't know you. I don't know where you are going. I don't know what to be competing with you. We don't bear the same surname. I might not see you again for I don't understand why. Why should you take it personal? Somebody overtook you. That's what somebody, I, mean, I don't understand. The person you are not going to see again. You don't even know the name of the person. And some will drive till they will have accidents. Struggling for space. You want to enter, enter. Enter and enter eternal life. You know, I, 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 <laughs> are, you, are you getting? <laughs> Sometimes I'm cruising, I'm not speeding. Maybe I'm playing the mess, I'm enjoying. If you want to speed, speed. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. This of all things, because of human interaction. See, this is why you must have layers upon layers of protection around yourself. You cannot go around suspecting people. But you cannot be careless enough not to set a law in motion that will clear the air in case somebody you think is with you is not with you. That's what the Bible says that every turn that rises, you will not even wait for them to rise. Regularly release statements that will diffuse, neutralize, and destroy anything being said anywhere around you. So that's part of the job of the tongue, apart from the first one, which is to create. Because as you are creating, if you are not conscious of the second one, somebody will keep destroying what you are creating. That means everyone under the sound of my voice. If the Bible said the earth was chiseled by God, what are you chiseling with your mouth? You know what? That's what uh, 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 James was saying. So if the uh, the uh, person in charge of the ship, maybe the naval officer or whatever, the captain, if it does not turn the steering to any direction, then the ship will go where the wind is moving. Ship can drive in any direction on water. They can go cruising, they go, you see, then they come back. They go, they come back. Last month, uh, in Washington, somewhere, I didn't even know. Close my I just took a walk and I found that there was a sea there. People gather. I know why they know how to enjoy. Some of those, I just wonder. Even little things I enjoy in Nigeria. I say, hey, boys are there to collect money from me as so I enjoy. So, yo, <laughs> I went to see my friend. They were playing league and they took their own turn. They are all students in Harvard University and uh, master students, some of my friends, and they had a match. They invited me. It was crazily cold. And their turn was about uh, 12 30. Match was start 12 30 in the night. People were coming, taking a walk home, free. Ha! Huh. I said, <laughs> well, you can do that, but keep your phones at home if they are very flashy. You understand what I'm saying? 
I still help the guy to. So what I did, I just stood there very close to the water. You know, the water will be vibrating going up. So I saw boats and ships, small, small ships. And there's some boats for cruising. And the white guy just came out on one and he said, oh, can you help me, sir? I said, why not? He said, I'm going to throw the rope at you. They help me tie it and hold it. I just want to do something inside. I enjoyed it. I held it. The boat was moving. The water wanted, but I was, I tied it to something at the shore and it, was, it wasn't going anywhere. So the vibration of velocity, whatever they call it, was there. But you see, it was fixed to something. Your tongue the ship will only be controlled by the wind. Now, if I remove that thing that I tied away now, the wind will take the boat away. If the wind of life is taking you away, it is not the wind. The Bible has a matter of fact, he that looketh at the wind will not plant. Let wind do its job. Is that wind is blowing, but it's blowing against you, you have no form of defense. This is why, you know, personally, whether Yoruba movie or Igbo movies, when these native daughters wake up, they first start speaking. They speak to the day, speak to everything. Christians jump up from their bed and they go out. Do you know that your day can hear your voice? You will not know these things are real. After a while, you will start seeing results because the way it works, when you begin to speak, it's like a tank that you are filling what time to. You can't just begin to have verse immediately. Every word, Jesus compared word to seed. You don't plan today and expect. Can I ask everybody listening to me? How many seed have you sown towards your future? And those of us that are children, they get them into it to begin to speak God's word over and over their future. If it is true that words don't die, you are going to harvest it. Can I hear amen? amen. Too many people are too quiet. This tongue is a weapon. It is given to you. Both as a weapon and as a paint and bro. Do something about it. Next service, we are going to look at categories of words. There are words of men and they have their place. But the most powerful are the words of God. Ah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, go for grace to trust the more. Spirit realm is very funny. They recognize voices, there is a code. What you are saying repeatedly, especially they are coming from your hearts. It's like building an edifice in the spirits. After a while, you start ripping. But you never, don't never, don't ever stop. As you wake up in the morning, when you finish praying, speak. The one who says day and night that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Watch, it's just a matter of time. Lack will disappear from his life. Because the spirit will be conditioned in such a way that supply this guy he has made pronouncement that he cannot lack. That's how you chart your course. What's like everything spoken against me by the blood I commanded to be of none effect. Mm. I spoke to somebody, I don't want to mention his name that you... He lives in a part of a nation where they kill Christians anyhow. And he was talking to me. And he said that when persecution arose, God showed him a scripture in Jeremiah. The Lord is with me like a mighty, terrible one. Therefore, my persecutor will stumble. From that, he said, I say it as many times as possible in a day. Not one person has been able to attack him in the midst of. When you hear people telling you that government invaded the house to take off, he said, they're looking for that person, and they came. And they've come two, three times. The person is still living in that same house and they've never met him and he has never left the place. There is a shield. There is a shield. He said, when it is not this as a saints who kill for religion, when it is other people, they just go down as they begin to try to attack. A law is set in motion. 
that touch not my anointed is not what you just think of. It must come out of your mouth. He suffered no man to do me harm. He rebuked kings of my say, saying, You have to. There is no heavily anointed person that I know. Whether they enter shop or they enter hospital or they enter office, they muster something under their breath. And it is scripture. I am in the name of Jesus Christ. All things work together for my good. You enter offices. Some Christians even go to go and look for contract and they say nothing. Ha. Huh. Guys on the other side, they will, cut, they will not do that. Don't you understand that? Elijah did not say, they, or Elisha, he didn't say, they that be with us are more than them. As he even quoted it like that, that thing that happened, first, uh, second, second Kings chapter 6, he said, they that be with us are more than they that be with them. For every visible army that you see, whether somebody is coming with you to you towards you with a gun or a pistol, there is a spirit sponsoring that you cannot see. When the spirit is cut off, the person is useless. When you enter an office, there are spirits manipulating the event from that realm here, and there are angels also waiting for a word of command. Don't just enter, you don't need more than 10 seconds. If you don't know any scripture and that might just say, I come in the name of Jesus Christ, then enter the shop and buy what you want to buy. Don't say, is it not to buy bread? This is the reason why Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. That means you live by the word. You live by the word. When you enter your car, enter with a word. God told her, you know why Psalm 114 happened? The Bible says, when Israel went out of Egypt, ah, I stop here. People of God from people of a strange tongue, Judah became a sanctuary, verse 2, and Israel is domain. The Bible said, the sea saw it and fled. Jordan was dribbled back. The Bible said, mountains were skipping like rams and little hills like lamb. And a voice came and said, oh, what, what did you see, see that made you to run? He said, flee before the God of Jacob. But you know how they, every time, Moses activated our presence. God gave him a code. He said, when you come, say that, oh God, you are dwelling with thousands of your people. That is the code which you must come. Israel never camped anywhere without Moses altering that. All of them will say the same thing. Then God told Moses that, when you want to rise and fold your camp, say, arise, oh Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. That statement must precede you. That's why all nations that attempted to fight them died for nothing. Three million people shouting, Arise, O God, let your enemies be scattered. Don't move your tent without speaking. Hey. Hi. One of the reasons why Robert Leadon at age eight, when he wrote, I saw, you know, he saw heaven when he was here, but he wrote it when he was 20. That book, I saw heaven. He said, The grandma would never. Let you step out of that without speaking over you. They had one grandma like that, one spiritual. She would never. She said one day, she forgot. Maybe she was praying. She was, they were already going. They stopped, they, the school bus had come. Robert Lando was walking to the bus. Grandma ran after him. He grabbed him at the door of the car, at the door of the bus. And spoke some words over him and pushed him inside. Now you can go. The guy became it and started seeing Jesus in his room. Grandma filled <laughs> Ah, remember what I told you? The only place that weed will grow is where you plant nothing. You understand? And weed is the only thing commanded. Weed is allowed to grow anywhere you don't plant anything. If you don't want weed to grow, you have to do something about the land. You cement the land or plant something there. If you leave it, so if you leave, since they fall on man, once you do nothing, what will happen is negative. I've been collecting your. If we want this thing to stay there, up without my hand holding it, you must do something. If you do nothing, it comes down. Law of gravity is called. The earth is caused. Whatever nothing is done to, we go down. It's a natural state. 
whatever land is left alone with, if we leave this building and we don't worship here and we abandon it for five, by the time you come back, Ross, it will, have, it will be something else. So, anything left alone. So, if we are quiet, like some people, you know, I don't speak evil to you, I don't say good thing, I just, I'm just quiet. If we are quiet, weed will grow. You have no choice. You have no choice. So when you read the Bible, beyond reading, put it in your mouth. After a while, you notice your life going in a particular direction. Mm. See, there was a time. Um, the pastor usually told me that I should, they usually tell me that I should be careful from testimonies that are but let me just say it this way. I found the scripture that has to do with people giving to you one time. And I began. For like a year, it looked like nothing is happening. And I would talk about people even giving in foreign currency. All of a sudden, it started in trickles. All of a sudden, it began to. And then, if I want to travel to America tomorrow, and all these people are living with nurses. Without telling any of you, anybody, anybody, somebody's going to come, whether it's a thousand or two, it might not be up to what I need, but that a foreign currency should not come. If I just, once I conclude that I want to travel, that is what will happen. And once I'm there, also God will just start opening doors. Yes. One time I was planning to travel like that. During the service here, Somebody came from UK, well, from America. He attended service and was way back to America that night. And he just after service was just walking around. He said, Oh, I need to buy. And then he gave me two thousand dollars. I said, This has happened maybe over 30 times without failing once. The last trip. Because once I told when it starts, was well, it for one year, nothing, but I never stopped. That's what I said. We shall reap if we faint not. Because there's a possibility of faith. Human beings are too... See, people are too fickle. Just want to see him once and then they just give up. This is what you make up your mind. Ah, I have friends. They were as sick as Lazarus. But they continued. After I just noticed that I stopped falling sick. So they have a record of nine years of no headache now. It didn't look immediately as if something was changing. But they continued. Pastor Chris Oyaki Lome, he was so sick... The wife, at a time, almost because the wife carried him with Pastor, Pastor Tom. They carried him to the hospital. Doctor said, What is wrong with you? He said, I cannot be sick. Doctor said, I think you are very sick right now. <laughs> but see, they treated him. He, has, he submitted to the treatment. He said, But nobody could change what I was saying. So he told her one time, he said, I was using multivitamin. He said, But no, he kept saying what he was saying. After one, not only did he get to a healing power followed. Because once you start speaking, Satan will throw things at you to discourage you. I told you before. Let's go to the other side. The way it started. Jesus saw the boy with epilepsy in Matthew 4, 17. He said, bring As the boy was coming, he started conversing. The moment you are close, Satan will see everything. He will just begin. So people say, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Oh, I am. Let me also say that. Don't only speak. Speak scripture. Then connect your word to the scripture. But don't look for immediate answer. It's a tree you are planting. The biggest of trees, they take the longest time to grow. But some of them, when they grow, you eat from them till forever. Did you hear what I've just said now? You know, when I taught on diligence, persistence is the problem of some Christian. To persist. They just start, then they stop. No, don't. I told you, and I end with you've seen him here before, and I've given this to Pastor Femi. He's come here to minister before. <laughs> it was one of our friends when we were final year, when we were all writing project that went to Cyber Cafe then, you know, all of us, everybody was in Cyber Cafe then to check for schools, to do masters. He came back and was talking in the room. And Pastor Femi said, What are the schools you saw? He said, ah, They call one Harvard. He said, ah, When you go next time, apply for Harvard for me. Now, they didn't give this guy that went Harvard. They gave Pastor Femi Harvard full scholarship. Full. I told the world led to my surprise. Ted Hall. I'd seen, I know his prophetic side, you know, I'd seen the judges in Oyo State coming to meet a student on their news. 
I will see police outside ministry because uh, if you need first class law, we used to tell him that you see, your lecturer gave you first class because <laughs> you administer to all of them. Because that forensic word of knowledge was at work in it, might that I mean. He would just look at people and he would, and then he never read anything once. He would read once, even if they would postpone the exam, it would stay there. Then we're talking. So I went to his room and I said, ah, Pastor, ah, we are broke. Oh. Now I was the pastor of the OUI then, pastor of the Joint Christian Fellowship. He said, Broke, yeah, Pastor, I broke here. I said, Yes, ah. He said, I don't understand why you are broke. Oh. Then he said that of all the money people gave me, they pay more to my account. A few people came, watch my word, a few sent money through an envelope. Majority paid to my account. Out of the envelope I've received, I've thrown away most. But let me show you some. And they climbed and brought envelope and poured it on the floor. I went with a brother, Pastor Lumide. I said, what kind of anointing do we have? And this is a fellow Christian like us. He said that most of the money came to his account. A few in envelope. He has thrown away some envelopes. And they still have this money for his students. Then he told me. He waited. He allowed the thing to sink. So when he finished talking with us, that they gave us money to go and buy food. At, to go and to a, the bigger restaurants in the Bado. As we were eating, we were thinking. <laughs> in real life, we were thinking. Then he told me. When he came to 100 level. He went to meet uncle, no money, no money, no money. He said, he begged. He said, for over a year, he was confessing radio, radio in the room. And the radio one was not forthcoming. No money, no money. He said, but he held on. He said, finally, the radio came. And he said, so this thing worked. And then he started. Then he said, the Lord showed him Psalm 60. So I said, 60, arise and shine, for thy light is come. Now that's a scripture from the beginning to the end, with words of blessing. Gentiles will come to your life. Kings to the brightness. That was why the judges were looking for him in school. He said from 100 level, as many as five times in the day, I arise and shine. My light, the glory of the Lord. Kings come to the brightness of my rising. He said my account is open there. They bring the wealth of the nations and the kings. All of a sudden, little by little, then there was a damp war. When he was going to Harvard, at Wait Alam Mohammed Airport, three of our friends escorted him. He emptied his pockets and he gave them money. He said, what I have is bigger than money. I will be doing a disservice to God by carrying money. He said, you guys share this among yourself. He said, if I step there and people don't give, the world has failed. When he landed there, people started, a white woman was taking him around. He was the first person to show that woman $10,000 in bulk. You know why? They use card a lot. They don't see cash many times. He said, this is how 10,000. The woman, her eyes popped on like popcorn. She is white from America. Because you can live in Lagos and not step in Sherati. I get what I'm saying. Ah. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? There's a pastor, you know. His wife studied abroad. When he was 18, he still had no sippers. Many of you, it's a popular name in Nigeria. But see, one day they went to one hotel. That was when they started the idea of using the key card, your card to open the door. So they got to the door and the wife said, ah, they, we've not collected key. Told the wife that, no, they gave you the key. With the form they gave you, that that's the key there. That's the card. The wife was shocked. That was in London. I said, how did you know? The wife said, the wife said how did you know? He said, well, I've come to this hotel a few times. And the wife broke down. She was shocked. She said, me, I schooled in London. This is a five-star hotel. I never stepped here. When I was schooling here, because my father is rich, you were in Nigeria, you had no sippers. Anybody can be overtaken in life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Few years have come and gone. The one that schooled the master, where she never stepped, this Nigerian boy came down and told her that I've been here a few times. So that's why I know that what you are looking at as a card is the key. He said he began to chant this scripture. Isaiah 60. Day and night. When he wanted to go to Harvard, including, I don't want to mention the one popular name in the battle. The son of that person gave him five million. People gave him money for the school fees in Harvard. So he went with excess of some millions. When he got to Harvard, they first contact with a lecturer there, they gave him full scholarship. 
He called those people that they, come and collect some money. Shall I translate? He said, no, no, we'll give you, we'll give you. This thing works. He gave me my first SUV. My first car was SUV. He gave me, it was one that gave me, the first car. Because it was just flying in prosperity. I was there when he went to bed meet. Anytime he goes to a place, he asks for the most expensive stop there. And he said, we'll come back tomorrow. And by the time he's coming back tomorrow, the money would have been available. He went to a mall in America and he told his peer, look at the card. About $200 left in the card. He bought 44 shirts. He asked the peer that buy 20 for yourself. He said, when it is God, make it more difficult. His power will be more real. They got to the peer was shivering. They hope they will tie us down here. Yeah. They got to the and they so they decided to swipe their card. The guy did, and the man said that uh, the thing declined. Insufficient credit. He just told the people that step up, step back, pick a few more things and come back. <laughs> and when the card went, went, went this time and I went in, I told the people, he said, It's not magic. He said, God will let us know why. He said, he said I don't know what happened. No, he said, But I know before tonight. By the night, a woman called. Ah, he said, I've been trying your number. Where? So I was told you are in America. He said, Anyway, when I tried, he said, Around 11 o'clock. They were in that mall around 11 05. So around 11 o'clock, I transferred this amount, so -so amount to your card. Hope you've seen it. That transaction happened there when he was standing there. Everything you need, there are angels between you and those who are holding it. What is the connection? The words of your mouth. When they finished talking that day, that was the day I learned Isaiah 60. <laughs> when we finish eating, the, let's what we call it the stupid food. You know, we just sat down there eating like somebody about to be killed <laughs> in sorrow. It was and, and the eating was outside UI. If you went to here, you understand what I'm talking about. One of the best that are very expensive. See, we're supposed to be rejoicing that our students were eating in the or we were eating like people too. So when we got to the gates of UI, the other guy went to his room, I went to my room. I just grabbed my Bible. She she Isaiah 60 <laughs> Abi. <laughs> my roommate was wondering, well, what's happening? But said, you just came in and went straight to yourself. I said, you don't understand. <laughs> she, leave me at the altar with my father. We must know that day I master till I can quote Isaiah 60 from beginning to the end for you now. It will let you know how many times I go over it in my mind. Every day. I still said, yes, I mean, I sat over it. But then he told me that. It, it, that doesn't mean, he said, now that you know, it doesn't buy by tomorrow. Uh, you two have, we have envelopes. He said, no, but stay with it. After a while, anything you plant, water, we grow. Yes, and when it starts, we know. Did somebody hear me? Bill Winston began to say wonderful things about his wife. And everything changed in the early days of their marriage. For there is a oh for a tree that falleth at the scent of water. But Jesus called the water the word. He said, By the water of the word, word, word. How many words have you dropped over your life? Especially in situations that look like ugly situations in your life. Words, words. This is powerful. Here in Lagos, I think it's happened in Trent. When a lady felt that no guy was asking her because she had a, actually she had an exceptionally flat nose, very flat. And she said it didn't make her look beautiful. She felt bad. I, Pastor Mrs. told her, God has never created an ugly person. And she began to call herself beautiful, speaking to herself. In no time, she met a man, very fantastic guy. On their one day, even the pastor didn't remember. She just asked randomly why she was joining them. That what attracted you to, what attracted you, her to you, or you to her, which one? Anyone, yeah, attraction, yeah? <laughs> and the, the guy said, a flat nose. There is a difference between a flat nose and the one that the word has been spoken over. If you are a lady and you think you are not beautiful, that is the problem. 
The beauty of the Lord is real. It comes from inside out. You know, I've told you before, I'm repenting gradually, like I'm very mischievous. Sometimes when I look at couples, young couples especially, and the young man is all over the lady. How are you like? Anyway. <laughs> That's the beauty of life. So some of you, you don't think she's very fine. But to her husband, then on her birthday on Facebook, you say that you are the most beautiful. I say, ah. <laughs> Shall we rise? <laughs> <laughs> is someone blessed no matter how you look tall short fair God has made you beautiful if you believe it the true beauty inside will surpass any external stuff that's the truth oh glory to your name glory to your name Glory to your name. I want to ask everybody, always do Bible study. It's in the place of Bible study, you start knowing scriptures that you can put in your mouth. You don't need to do a lengthy reading if you cannot. If your energy, if your attention can carry five scriptures, start with that. What you must not do is that whatever you study in the morning, if you can't remember again in the evening, it's not a good thing. So read what you can. If you read a portion of the Bible and it's not really making, then go to another part. I have told you I'm going to write devotional. Because Bible people are asking us. Or I will ask, I, I, I told Brad Dick, what, Brad Dick what should write it. Because so that people will know where to read and where to start from. Daily devotional. Because people don't know where to start from in the Bible. You must always remember what you have read. Because all through the day, your mind should go back to what you have studied. It is God's word to you. After a while, all this wanting to hear an audible voice, hear something, the best way is the word of God. Is the only sure, is the surest word. Is the surest word. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Is somebody blessed this afternoon? Hello, thank you for watching us. We don't want this to end without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. You know, um, after listening to God's word like this and you have never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, it's an opportunity to come to him and it's a simple process because he has made all things available. I want to employ you now to give your heart to Christ and by saying these words, because giving your heart to Christ must be done consciously, he has paid the price. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I believe that you died for me and that you rose again. I believe that you shed your blood for my justification. I accept your finished work right now, and I confess that you are the Lord of my life. I believe in you. Thank you, Jesus. If you have said those words, you are actually born again, a new creation in Christ. Join us for more of this. God bless you.